Hello and welcome to this video and on this video I'm going to be telling you all about Patreon. I'm not going to be telling you about Patreon because I want you to sign up. I have no interest on that video of uh, selling that and I won't be doing that on this video. This is more to try and get the point across to creative people, creative musicians, creative artists, creative anybody that I believe that the future for um, people actually being able to utilize their creativity and make a living out of it will be on websites like Patreon. And I wanna go through that. But also Patreon, even though it's just getting off the ground and uh, more and more people are starting to learn about how great it is, they are, they are under a threat, currently under threat from Apple. The big companies are always coming in to try and monopolize and uh, I will be covering that as well. And that might be a great place to start, but just before we get into that, I'll just tell you what Patreon is. So Patreon is a site, you join it, and when you join it, you can you become a member, you become a patron. And on there, you can search for all sorts of different creative people. And if you find somebody that you like, that you want to support, and you want to support them uh, being a creative person, you can join their patron. When you join their patron, there's a number of um, different ways you can join. Often you can join as a free member and you will get some limited content, but you'll be able to keep in the loop in terms of news and stuff like that. In terms of my patron, I do try and put up quite a reasonable amount of content for the unpaid members. Uh, usually stuff like getting them involved in like polls or discussions about um, ideas I'm working on for the channel um, and then you can set up a number of tiers you know so you can have a tier that say five dollars a month and you get a certain amount of stuff for that you could have one that say twenty dollars a month you'd get more right and you offer what, all the different things you're going to do now uh, I joined it uh, last year um, I've now got around about 350 um, members on there and I think I've got around about 150 paid members on there um it's making a reasonable amount of money uh, enough for me not to ignore and it helps fund all sorts of things the money goes um from pay from patreon into my paypal account and i tend to use my paypal account to then pay for stuff online which is a lot of the stuff i have to pay for to run the channel um so it's become invaluable to me but also being in direct contact with uh, people who are actually fans of the site has also been very, very useful as well to try and get their input on all sorts of different things. Um, as I've been doing Patreon, I've re realised that there is it's far more than just putting like a news post up or some extra content or a video that didn't go on YouTube, which is the way I started up. I start to realise that there's a lot more engagement going on. Um, every now and then I will do a Patreon meeting on Zoom and they're all welcome to jump in and we chat about all sorts of different things. Sometimes I'll have a guest come in and then those videos are then put into Patreon. That's a brilliant way of thinking how Patreon can work if you want to know how to get into it, is to start talking to your fans and, and, and to create a fan base. Uh, more recently, I set up a WhatsApp group, a private WhatsApp group, which is only accessible from links within um, the paid members patron. And uh, we have a lot in there and that WhatsApp group is very, very busy. Um, I, I can't believe the stuff that goes on on that. In there, there's you know music fans and musicians and what's wonderful is some of the music creators have been able to join my patron and then access to the WhatsApp are then able to share music they're working on with people who are interested and like-minded. So. For me, Patreon is an ongoing thing. I'm finding more and more ways to um, get into Patreon, and to um, and I've 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 started to think that um, at some point I know that the Patreon will be the central point of my creativity. Now, in this video, I want to talk about a big mistake that I think creative musicians make. Ask yourself, what do you think the central thing is? What's the thing you're working towards? And I promise you, it'll probably be gigs or like albums. 
that is absolutely pointless. What you should be doing is setting up a patron, you should be using social networking, and you should be using your creativity to try and draw people into the story of who you are, and then you should be direct them towards patron to start off with as free members, and then as people um, warm to you and buy into what you're doing, because that's the way you make money. It's not about how good you are, it's about how many people out there want to get joined in and part of the story. And once they do, then they will feel very happy to uh, part with money to try and support you in what you're doing. And likewise, you will feel very grateful to be on the end of that and being able to have people supporting you. And it's much more the psychological aspect that's important rather than the money. It seems to tie up a whole bunch of psychological problems that stop people from creating. So what you're looking at here should be in the long term the center for your creative doings right so what i've done is i've i've gone into my patreon so i'll just scroll up to the top there we go that's that's my patreon there so you can see uh, it, you can you get a shot of my chin and my fingers like that and i'm thinking i'm in deep thought which re represents the sort of philosophical aspects of my uh, you know that that that's the there that, that that that's that's the symbol for deep thought, right? Um, you're looking at this as though you're a paid member. So as you see, you can scroll down and there's all sorts of content here. Um, and I'm gonna go through this just so you can see how that works, right? Um, at the top here, I have a video that is coming out next week. It's um, uh, an early release, but what's far more important, because I actually um, had copyrighted content in this video as soon as i put it up to youtube it just would not allow it to go up it was blocked and so um youtube said if you snip these things out then we'll let you do that so i just didn't want to waste the effort so i let youtube snip the stuff out sort of ruining some of the funniest bits in it but i am now if that does happen i don't mind taking the risk because i will put that stuff up onto here and my patrons will be able to see the full thing unedited, uncensored, and also without any ad breaks. And if you click on it like this, it, you could see it um, works just like YouTube. The quality is whatever the quality is. Um, traverse out and have a look more in the rock world and see what they get up to. Now, this is one of my favourite music. Talking about Michael Schenker here. Look at these two Andes. I mean, this this is worth just watching the video anyway. So, uh, so I'm just going to run through some of the content I've got now. I promise you I'm not doing this to try and sell anybody to go over. So I'm going to forbid anybody from coming over from this video. I'm saying do not do it. I mean, I'm doing this because I want creative people to go, oh my God, that actually looks really good. And if people get onto Patreon and they message me or even become a free member of my Patreon so you can message me direct, I will try and help support you in getting somewhere with Patreon. Um, a lot of the bands I'm in, um, I've said straight off, we've, we, we've set up patrons and I'm finding it a great difficulty to get them to realise that that is the central place. So they don't put content up. They don't think to put content up. And even with that, we have still been able to manage to pull fans in that want to support the band. And then we come back 10 months later and we suddenly see there's $500 in there. And you think, oh, what can we do with that? And the reason is because people have been supporting us, even though there's no content going up. Because the primary reason why people are here is because they want to support you, right? It's not about the content. The content is the thank you. If you're very busy and you can't do it and you explain it and people know where you're coming from, they will work with you. This is your audience. These are your fans, as opposed to social networking, where it's a bunch of people who don't know who you are and you're basically strangers and you're trying to win them over, right? That, you have to understand how audiences work. What the record business used to do in the old days was create a fan base and that fan base would then part with money people part with money because they're a fan 
A fan will buy an album that they know is bad by an artist they love just to have that album, but that person won't buy an album that they think could be good by someone they've never heard of. Once you get your head around that and you start to understand the psychology, right, and this is not conning people. The thing with Patreon is more than the music business, it was a bit of a con. This is not a con, right? What this is is is, is a subscription-based um economy for artists and going forward that's the only one that seems to work is a subscription based economy right so um i will just skiddle down see what we've got here so here um we have um a video from the law of three gig now i hope you go over to the law of three patron we have just had made an hour-long music video of a concert it's been properly shot it cost us money we need to recoup that money for the band to survive and over on um, the Law of Three Patreon, we have put that up exclusively exclusively for the patrons. Now, if you want to um, watch that video, you could just sign up for one month, watch the video a few times, and then jump out, you know, because you don't have to stay here. There's nothing, there's no contract tying you in. But the new thing that Patreon has brought out is you can also sell goods separately and it creates its own little website. So we've also set this little music video up as a paid stream as well. So we've had other people who didn't want to um, join in the, and become a fan, but they've still been able to buy the product. Now, this will support audio, but it will also support video. So imagine Bandcamp, but right across the board. You can sell anything, you know, you, in terms of digital products. And you can sell physical products exactly like Bandcamp. And the um, cut that Patreon is taking is 8%, as we will find out. It's, this is quite incredible. And this new thing of being able to sell digital products through Patreon and physical products, I feel this is the place to be because everything is housed here. If anything goes down, you know, all these threats that we see that, you know, YouTube decides to change its rules or band gets, band, band camp gets bought out by somebody else that just rips a few of the things that it used to do out. You have a safe place here. Sorry, a safe place here, maybe. Because on this video, I'm going to be going into what's threatening Patreon. That's really what it's about. But I did want to explain how it works. If I just go down to the next one here, um, I have just filmed a video called The 10 Greatest Jazz Guitarists Ranked. Everyone likes a ranking video. But this one, I didn't choose. My patrons chose. And this post here was open to the free members as well as the paid members. And what we did is we came up with a list of, uh, sort of classic jazz guitarists. I put them up there and then people started been voting for them. If you scroll down to the bottom, they've also thrown in their comments and thoughts on it, which helped me a lot. Um, now, once I got that list, I then sent that over to the legendary virtuoso British jazz guitarist, one of the greatest jazz guitarists to ever live, as far as I'm concerned, Martin Taylor, MBE. And Martin has just um, done a two-hour interview where we've gone through the patrons list. Now, that's an incredible thing to be able to grab the people who like the channel, embrace them in, and then get them involved in something like this. So when they watch the video, they can say, my God, we've been involved in the creation of this. This is really exciting stuff. Um, this here, now this is exclusive content for my channel. It's an interview with Laura Three. Um, and I'll show you something else that's great about Patreon when it loads. It's taking a little bit of a while to load. They don't normally take Project, a while. Which has been an album that we've just released on CD. Now if I, I, if I zoom to the back end of this, right? This is but something I can't do on Patreon, on, on YouTube. Well, that's so... So this is something I just can't do on YouTube. I have my Law of Three band here. Um, these two are virtuoso magicians. Roy Marchbang is one of the greatest guitarists in the world, one of the most technically advanced guitar players in the world, but he's from Scotland. And we are basically chatting, and this is something that was organic. We just started chatting about music, but towards the end, 
we went into this discussion of Scotland with me sort of having a go at him, you know, and sort of taking the mickey out of the Brit the English, Scottish, you know, brave heart type of thing going on. And this is actually very funny. There's no way, there's no context in which I could put this up onto the YouTube. I don't know how I would sell it. Nobody would want to watch it, you know, but I would say, you know, me and me and Roy Marchbank argue about Scotland. It just it just doesn't make sense. And so what I find with Patreon is I've got a ton of freedom because the audience that have captured here is into what I do and I can talk to them. And in, if um, I do all sorts of things, let's scroll down, just have a look at a few more of the things because it's taken me a while to learn how Patreon works. Now, um, on here, if you go into, if we go up to here, and you collect, you you click on collections, right? So I've got two collections here. This is another part of Patreon that I think is absolutely wonderful. So if you click on solo album collection here, there we go. Um, this is basically Bandcamp. <laughs> it contains signed Patreon. I have all my albums here, every single one, and I am much happier that someone would come along and register for you know just one month pay me the five quid take all my albums for five quid then to then go over to Bandcamp and buy the whole lot for about a hundred quid which is the difference i've got no problem with, with people doing that because once they're there if i'm good enough to create compelling contact they might just stay for another month so it puts the emphasis on me to be a good creator and try and create something that's entertaining. You can stream audio inside here. So I'll just play. Um... And I've got tons of exclusive tracks in here. It's, it's whatever you could think of doing. Patreon will be able to uh, find a way of doing it. And then you've got the download there so they can download the, um, the, that, whole album there and that's basically the identical to the Bandcamp download so it comes in with all the meta tags in all the artwork you can just grab it there um i am much happier with this i i and when i look at how much money this is making compared to Bandcamp, it's just it's not even comparable so at some point i think i will move over to here now the other day i made an album in one day it was after the general election here in the uk and it was called post landslide and i basically felt I need to get something off my chest, which happens to me a lot. So I went into my studio and I recorded one sort of, I think it's about an hour long or half an hour, it's a long track. I basically just improvised this long track. Now, I mixed it and I found it very interesting, but I knew that compared to the albums that had taken me like two or three months to make that are on my band camp, this was a different type of thing. And I felt a little bit guilty about putting it up there and I thought, well, I don't charge anything on Bandcamp now. You can, everyone can download everything for free if they want. Uh, and then I work off the donations. That's what I found is a much better way of trying to support yourself as a creative musician. There's another bit of truth there. Stop charging everybody for stuff. Just let them have it and then let them tip you, in effect, if they think you you need it. Um, and uh, people want to support creative artists. If they think, oh, this person's struggling. and Because uh, all us art creative artists are struggling. It's a, it's, um, it is the deal with the devil when you just decide to be an artist. You are cursing yourself. You know, life is difficult as it is. But when you become a creative person, you curse yourself to a certain life, which is very, very difficult. Um, and that's compounded usually that what's driving that person to be like that is is mental health issues, which they have learned to cope with through being creative. So this is a really difficult thing. And I think people, when they appreciate art, they, that's actually the bit they're appreciating. They see a tiny bit of the angst that they have in their everyday life manifest in this person that's been able to express it on a great level. And the reason why they can express it on a great level is because they experience it. It's the only way of getting out of their system. Now, this video where I'm talking about sort of music business stuff and how to establish yourself, no one's ever going to say that to you, but fundamentally, that is the business model. You are trying to monetize um, that's something that you have to do. That is why everybody has the dream of making it, right? So, um, 
So I'm having messages coming in. This is this is the trouble with being a creative person. I'm doing this video. I'm trying to do about five things at once to keep all up with everything because this is a lot of work. And so I'm having to run messages at the same time. Messages are appearing up there. I'm trying to check out what I'm doing. It's work coming in. This is what you have to do. Now, what would be great would be to live in a, a, um, a, a world where everything comes through Patreon. The message that came through, which was to book a drum lesson, could easily be going through Patreon. I could be taking the money once a month from them. I could It's a Zoom lesson, so I could organise them in here. But people aren't signed up. If everybody who likes me, everybody who follows what I do, if they were all signed up in here, and I'm talking about the um, 34,000 people that are subscribed to YouTube, if I had them here, not only would I be able to fund what I'm doing, but I could... I could employ other creative people to work for me and I would be able to support other creative people and bring them up into uh, into this world, which fundamentally is why I'm here. You know, I've, I've been a music educator all my life and the reason why I'm shooting this video is because I want people out there to go, wow, I'm going to get into Patreon. This, uh, this looks really, really good. Um, I'll do see what else we've got. So there's um, uh, a, a free EP, another free EP. Oh, because I'm looking in. I'm looking in the collections bit. Um, I also did a deal with a guy called Steve Lawson that I used to work with um, in the old days. And we've done a lot of albums together. So I've created a separate collection. Now, so these are albums where I've said, is it okay? Because he's selling these through his band camp. He's got his subscription. And he's been kind enough to let me put these albums that he's on, all these ones as well. Uh, now, remember, I'm not charging for this. This is all free to the members. I'm making my money out of the membership. This is then stuff I'm giving them for free. So I'm not technically making money specifically off this. I think I'm getting into the weeds now as, as far as patrons concerned. I think I've described it well enough to now go to this video here. Now, this beardy guy, I don't know his name, right? Here, here he is. You may have seen him because he's got a YouTube channel. And he sits with his mates and they talk to various musicians. He did one about Lewis Cole at one point, And I I know he's had Narada Michael Walden on this channel. And they talk about music. They're all musicians. They talk about music. Now, the guy with the beard, that one, if you know him, if you don't know him, it doesn't matter. But if you know him, that guy is the guy that set up Patreon. So this is a creative musician who set up a platform to work. This isn't about some big company just working out how they could monetize your existence, which is what most of them are. Now, he recently put this out, which is why I'm doing this video. I wanted to explain the importance of Patreon and how brilliant it is, and then try and spread the word on this video and give you my thoughts on it. Now, the uh, link is down below. I'm not going to show you all of it, but let's just watch the first start, shall we? Hey, creators. I want to make a video for you because Apple is requiring that Patreon make a number of changes by November of this year or risk getting kicked out of the App Store. And these changes have an impact on creators and they have an impact on Patreon. We've got a plan and we're going to bend over backwards over the next year to make sure we minimize the impact on creators as much as possible. But I thought it was important to start talking about it now to make a video and to let you know what we're doing about it. This video is going to be super long because I want to be really thorough in explaining the changes. So super long. 16 minutes. Chapter that works for you. He yeah, obviously hasn't watched channel. my channel. Also, if you don't want to sit through a whole video, we've released a blog post that I'm linking down below that has all the critical information that you need to That will all be in the links to my video. Apple has their own payment system called in-app purchases. And they are requiring that Patreon use their payment system, in-app purchases, instead of our payment and billing systems in the Patreon app starting in November of this year. If we don't do this, Apple might kick us out of the App Store, which would be terrible for creators and terrible for Patreon because iOS is actually now the most used platform for communities on Patreon. Okay, so here's what this means for creators. First, Apple is gonna be applying their 30% App Store fee to all new memberships purchased in Patreon's iOS app. 30%, for reference, Patreon's platform fee for all of Patreon is 8% for most creators. So this is almost four times what Patreon charges. This doesn't affect your current members at all. They won't see any changes and they won't have to pay a cent more. But 30% for new memberships is still a heavy fee. And so we have a plan for this and I'll get into that in a minute. The second change is that Apple is no longer supporting our older billing models after this November. Billing models like charge up front, non-charge up front, and per creation. And Apple has made it clear that if creators continue using those billing models or disable transactions in the iOS app, 
then Patreon is at risk of having the entire app removed from the App Store for all creators. So we're starting a migration process to get creators onto our newest billing model, the one that Apple does support, so that creators can keep accepting payments in the iOS app and so that Patreon can keep our app in the App Store. Now what he goes on to describe is all the incredible work that they have done to try and counteract this, you know, kick in the bottom from Apple, which I think is absolutely disgusting. There are people out there that are trying to use the internet to create platforms for creative pe um, people. Bandcamp was such a platform. Bandcamp was like the antithesis to Spotify and all those streaming sites created by musicians to support musicians. It's been bought out twice now. Half the people who have worked there have been sacked. And although I haven't really seen any real impact so far in terms of what I'm doing over on Bandcamp, um, knowing as I did, I had a, I had a, a, um, a, a follower of the site that was actually quite friendly with the people who had set up. And a few years ago, that you know, I was told that the big companies are chasing Bandcamp all the time. Now, um, the big fear with Bandcamp is that once they get control of it, they use it as their distribution platform. And then you start to have to charge and pay and do all these types of things. I don't want to get into all of that here. Um, the point is that I want to make is the people who set up Bandcamp have honourable intentions and the people who set up Patreon, whoever this guy is, and I wish I knew your name, but this guy with the beard and the hat, have absolutely honourable intentions and they have tried to do it the best they can and I'm sure that um, they don't need to be using their workforce that is living off, you know, their company is living off that 8% of, of, of what us creators are doing. Um, they don't want to be using that time to try and battle Apple and get jumped around the problems that Apple are throwing at them. So this um, throws up a number of questions, doesn't it? The first question being, um, why is Apple doing this? Well, the reason is, is because Apple, like Facebook, Meta, you know, all of these things, they they need to try and monopolise what's going on. And um, so there is a sort of... A, oh, any site like this will be damned by its own success. So patrons set up. They um, have set something up to support creative artists. They've thought of everything through, but no creative artists know about it. But some start to come on. And some, once the creators are in there, it's dependent on the creators being successful. If you've got a platform where that is their main business model, you have got it made. YouTube is like that. That's why I love YouTube. Because YouTube, it's quite obvious, want me to have a million views, right? When I'm doing stuff that I'm that won't get me a million views, it will slap my hand and go, what are you doing, Andy? And I'm going, well, I'm being creative. You go, well, you can be creative, yeah, but can you try and get a million views? So that's what they want because every YouTuber has got a unique audience if they've done it right. And so the advertisers can then target if you have a certain audience. You have to be aware. If you've just got a YouTube that's appealing to everybody, YouTube may not be as interesting. But if your demographic is specific, oh my God, I can tell you now who watches my YouTube. I can tell you specifically who they are. And so um, if that audience is also an audience that buys stuff, they're quite wealthy and they've got some extra cash, then you've got it made. And I understand that that's the sort of capitalist deal. And I haven't got a problem with it because they're giving me the autonomy to use my creativity to try and get views. And if I can try and get views, then I can start to bolt in the creative thing that I want to do. Creativity has always been like this. It's, it's a decision you have to make between being here and doing exactly what you want creatively in here and being commercial and acceptable. And most of us, I think, want to be in the middle, but you need to be sp specific in how much you are going to do that or the way you're going to do that. Um, I had a, a chat with uh, Martin Taylor yesterday, uh, the jazz guitarist. Did I mention that earlier on? <laughs> I think I did, didn't I? Am I getting so old I can't remember what I've said? Anyway, uh, and we started talking about the distance between George Benson and Wes Montgomery. Wes Montgomery was pushed into making commercial recordings by the record company and he made a lot of money, uh, but it was never the thing he really wanted to do. Whereas George Benson saw being popular as a vehicle for doing his guitar playing. And he made the point, Martin did, that when you watch George Benson, 
when he gets to the guitar solos, even on the most commercial songs, he's still playing full out. This is the key to having a successful business. It's not about networking or who you know or knowing how everything works. It's about looking at yourself, looking at the projects you've got and deciding what you want to do and what, where the heart of it is and how you are going to make that accessible to people so they can get aligned straight back to the creative source. That is when people are happy. And you've got to remember that your job as a creative musician who wants to be a professional is to just find a way to sustain yourself. That is what um, getting paid means. It's not about getting paid. It's, it's a, being able to sustain yourself so you can be creative. And your creativity will be based upon um, the ability to be supported in doing a certain thing that you love. And I can't tell you what that is. And sometimes you can find that there will, may well be an aspect of what you do that is actually very accessible, but at the same time, is also um, delivers the, what you need emotionally and creatively. So um, that is a really good um, thing to discover. Do you want to know how to discover it? You need to chat about it. You need to talk about it. This is why I talk about it on the channel. Um, so this guy has set that up. He's on your side because what he wants from me is for me to get more and more patrons all paying up because he can get his 8%. 8%, you know, so he wants me basically to make $92 so he can make $8. So I know that guy's on my side. I'm also just looking at him and the way he's, his beard and the piano in the background and his hat and everything. I trust that guy. Apple have got a different business model, right? So Apple make their money primarily, prim primarily, I think, on the actual kit, don't they? All right, so here I am. There's my Apple Mac, all right? So um, that there is an expensive laptop. They have conned us into thinking that... Um, their, their, their computers are the best. If you're a creative person, you need to have their stuff, right? And that's a real problem for Patreon because a lot of creative people have Apple stuff. So they will have Apple Pay and they will want to do Patreon through that app. If they were looking at uh, uh, um, the clientele that uh, weren't using Apple at all and were using other Samsung phones or whatever it is to, to access it, they wouldn't care at this point. But obviously there's a lot of people using Apple and that denotes a certain type of person which when I denigrate them a tiny bit as I am I am one of those people um, here I've actually got Macs and I've got PCs I have to use both because that can be a pain in the bum right in many ways now um, that costs a lot of money and Apple have done a very good job in getting us psychologically to compare that um, MacBook Pro, which probably would cost about a thousand quid, with a, a PC laptop, Windows laptop, which is probably 400 quid. <laughs> it's an incredible con. And so what they want is when you buy the Apple, um, you, an Apple product, they want everything in there. They want that you to open it up and have the whole world for free, basically. That is their business model. And so they want to own Patreon. They want to have Patreon offered for free. They want artists to buy the Apple product because Patreon is wound into it. They want to be able to make that easy for people who buy their product because this company is now starting to make some money and they have spotted it. If they were quietly in the corner, Apple would not be doing this. They would not care. But what's happened is Apple very simply has looked at their books and went, hang on, there's ultimate money coming in through this Patreon app. We should have 30% of that, don't you think? <laughs> it's almost like the Cray twins who were gangsters here in the UK and in London. It's almost like them coming round to your house and knocking on the door. But at least they're going to protect you if you do pay them every month. I don't know. I find this absolutely rotten. I really do. The internet is a place which could be a wonderful place for sowing peace and harmony and... Um, giving creative outlets for people and bringing people together and doing all sorts of joyous things. Um, 
But the powers that be don't want that to happen. They're always driving it to another place, which would be them on top and controlling the world with us all, with us all handcuffed into it, you know, sucking their digital nipple of hate, <laughs> you know, keeping us there almost like um, a dealer with drug addicts, you know, through winding us up, making us angry, making us feel insecure. All that is going on. And the thing is, is that as soon as you get involved with this business, you suddenly realise that you're involved in it too. So in a very soft way, I know that my videos are going to do better when they're full of hate rather than love. You know, I knew the other day that I went, well, 10 bands I hate, 10 guitarists I hate. And the thing is, I could dress hate up in a variety of different guises. Hate could be overrated. Hate could be um, what the critics think's the worst. You could do that video over and over again and people will watch it every single time. And um, I have been sucked into that recently and I will probably be sucked into it again because I need to get the views. The question is, for me, is how do you do that and feel ethically like you haven't done something terrible? Now, the way I see it is, is that if there could be an educational aspect to it. Now, what I mean by that um, is when you get interested in music, a great big chunk of that is intuitive. And so nobody needs to tell you to come along and know that. Or there's a whole ton of intuitive stuff about music. But there's a whole bunch of counterintuitive stuff. And a teacher or an educator, they need to try and get the counterintuitive stuff. Now, the problem is, if you sit somebody down and they've had all the success with the intuitive side, when you start to say something that's counterintuitive, they will not like it and, and they will resist, right? And so sometimes you need to come in and provide a shock, right? Which is partly what I try and do. Now, this rocks the boat, it would be much easier for me if I just came up and kissed the arse of every person who watches this, but I don't. Now, I'm a natural contrarian. I'm a natural stirrer of the pot. And so I, I quite enjoy doing that. But I've got to be honest, when you do it, you do get a ton of hate. Um, now, I, I'm going to show you something here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I'll switch this off. I'll give you an idea of what we're up against here. Um, and I didn't plan to do this, so I haven't got the window. I mean, I'm just going to go into my messages. Um, and I'm going to pull up a message I was sent the other day, because I'm really trying to give you an idea of, 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 of being a creative person, what you are now having to deal with. So um, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So I'm going to play, set, play you a message. Now, there is some awful language in this, so much that it might actually get this video blocked. I'm not playing this because it's my words. This is what you are going to get as a creator when you start to stir the pot. So I do apologise for this. If you don't want to hear some really offensive language, then I would put your fingers in your ears now and I'll tell you. I'll shout you when it's ready. But I had this message the other day. Now, he's um, specifically responding to the beef between me and the prog corner, which uh, are my friends and was a bit of fun. Trying to find a way of presenting hate in a way that's not really hateful. And the other aspect of it, which is when I do this, I try and bring in some comedy so people can realise that it's almost like a satire on what is going on. That how to so when you watch it, there's aspects in there 
where you will naturally think, oh my God, this is so silly. You know, I will take the Mickey out of a top 10 video. I have done the top 10 mustaches. I have done the top 10 biscuits. If you watch that video, the humor comes across, not just the fact that I'm doing that. It's the fact that throughout it, I keep saying, this is the objective list. You don't need to go anywhere else. I have nailed it. There is no other list. This is unquestioned. This is the top 10 bis biscuits. And the thought that comes in with that is, no, but it's a matter of taste, which is why I chose the biscuit, because a biscuit is completely a, a matter of taste. But there's another thing that I sort of lampoon all the time on here, and it's me being a snotty English person, right? In the English aesthetic, which I go on, tries to deflate authority and the way it often does it is by the self-deprecating de humor so i am continually making myself out to be a stuffy englishman that doesn't like foreigners that doesn't like this that doesn't like that that believes that um that foodstuffs that britain make are the best and actually picks the biscuit because the biscuit is a very english thing americans don't even know how to name it properly they call it a cookie Right, a cookie, it's our language. Now, what I've just done then, I've just moved over into what I would call satire or parody. That's what I've just moved in. It's a lampoon. Now, this guy could well be doing the same sort of thing. And I have a feeling he is. I, I, I actually don't feel that threatened by the death threat I've got. I think this guy has got a funny sense of humour and it's a bit extreme. I mean, if he does turn up, and kill me but that will be another matter but i hope he doesn't and i i am you know i i i uh because basically fundamentally what he is criticizing me for uh um which is being a muslim which um i'm not a muslim but uh some of my family my great granddad was a muslim so i'm quite proud of that fact uh and i could also be critical of the muslim religion and i find it a bit censorious to um, that if I was to do that, then I now become Islamic, Islamophobic, even though I um, have, I'm critical of all religions, really, you know, and I, I, I don't know if uh, Richard Dawkins is, is Christianophobic. I find the whole thing. Um, should I bring that into this channel? It's I've done this for so long now, it's hard not to bring the politics in because you're talking about aesthetics. I'm going off the subject here, but what I'm trying to get into is that material that I'm in is part of the machine that makes it compelling for people to watch what you're doing. There is the, the human aspect. There's what you're up to. You as a person, you as a personality, things that happen to you in your personal life. People want to know about that. There is your um, aesthetic view of the world. There is your political view of the world. There is your moral view of the world. People will want to know about that. They will not want to be able to get into the nooks and crannies. And these are people that are moving towards you and becoming your team. They're, they're, and the closer they are, the more they will be a part of you. And I believe that music's made out of love. And I believe that I'm trying to put my arms around the audience and embrace them in. And I'm trying fundamentally to push positive comments and politically i'm trying to make the point that we should just all be tolerant of everybody's opinions and try and get a, a, a spectrum of political opinion where when the context is is um asking for redistribution or kindness or the things that left champion then um that is looked at, whereas um, when a, a big dose of capitalism or individualism or, or responsibility and personal rights, which the right seem to champion, when those things are needed, then we go there. Now, I know people who will be um, on the on the political spectrum that cannot deal with anything counter to what they say. They will be shouting that their political position contains the things that I just said was what it didn't contain. But the whole thing about politics is there should be those two points of view and they should be argued. Um, and they should be argued with kindness and compassion. That is the point. Um, that is my fundamental message. And that comes from the idea that music brings us together. There's a certain demograph here. There's a certain experience that has come from living through a certain time in music and seeing the change artistically that's happening and culturally and being able to recognise a similar experience that I've had in your experience, and that I know is fundamentally what keeps people here on the channel, and I've tried to monetize that. And I have done that through um, the ad revenue that I get on 
YouTube and um, on Patreon. Now, before I did this, I was a lecturer in music, so I've helped for 30 years musicians trying to access the industry. I've given it a lot of thought, and I feel like the experience I've got has um, been evidence in my ability to be able to make something out of this situation which i have had to do because the education system is crumbling and the music industry is crumbling and people like apple are coming along to carve up creativity we are leaving maybe the cultural era where the individual creative person is valued Whereas these companies just see our output as being a commodity that they can monetize. And the best thing for them would be able to do that themselves, to own it themselves. And that's what we see going on here. So this video is also, it's really trying to highlight for creative musicians and also creative fans, because you're the most important ones, that patrons are interested in things. So if you want to go over to Patreon, register for it, start searching for your artists. And if they offer a free membership, Go in and see what happens, you know, see what you get, see, see what you get out of it. Um, that was part of it. If you're a creative person, I want you to really point towards Patreon because I think it's a brilliant model of uh, creativity in the 21st century. And also highlight some of the dangers, both on the corporate, you know, um, capitalist company side, but also on the poison that is out there that you will get as soon as you start to have an opinion. And of course, art is all about having an opinion. So I hope this video was relatively interesting for you. It was a different thing for me. Um, I hope it's got some information for you. This will be a Philosophy Sunday video um, where I can try, try and broaden my um, stuff. And that's it. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to sell myself. I'm not here to do that. And uh, if you notice, there will not be any adverts on this. I am not going to make any money out of this one. And I'm not going to try and sell anything. I'm going to try and do show that um, every now and then I can, I can be, um, what's the word? Compassionate and selfless and think of other people. Right, let's get back to try and thinking up some lovely video like, I don't know, um, harmonica players that I despise. <laughs> Ten top 10 ranked that's a good one who'd be at the top of that who do i hate the most who plays a harmonica it's bob dylan in it <laughs> see you all <laughs>